This is the Dell XPS from 2021. It's leak, it's thin, and it cost me a couple thousand dollars, but a couple months ago, it stopped working. It would just get stuck on the boot screen and just shut off constantly. I figured it was a battery issue and I tossed it aside in the closet, but there was one last hope for it and that's with Linux. Now, in another video where I finally quit Windows to go to Mac, many of you told me that Linux would have been easier and free. Just put it on an unused PC, you said, and so, I had an idea and I used this laptop for it. And what happened after that was actually amazing. I've been using Linux for the past month now and honestly, it's sort of awesome. So is Linux going to bring life back into my old laptop? Did I just waste money by switching to Mac? Or is this all going to be a huge waste of time? A couple of weeks ago, I finally quit Windows. Windows 11 kept showing me ads and unwanted content in the taskbar on the startup screen and everywhere else it could. Now, if I wanted content, I would go to YouTube, maybe even TikTok if I was desperate, but not on my operating system. So I finally broke. I couldn't handle it anymore and I quit it for good. I wanted control of my device, not to be controlled by it. So I bought a refurbished MacBook Air for a couple hundred dollars thinking it would be my primary OS, but that didn't come without problems. Despite that, I was happy with my Switch. My new to me Mac could do everything I wanted it to with the perk of being ultra portable too. But after releasing a video on it, my happiness transformed into uncertainty because now everyone was saying Linux would have given me what I wanted and more for free. Had I made a mistake? I've tried Linux Ubuntu more than 10 years ago, but I quit it after about 30 seconds only to come running back to Windows. I couldn't use the command line, but hundreds of anonymous comments telling me Linux is better can't be wrong, right? So now I'm asking myself, is Linux the right operating system for me? Or am I about to discover exactly why it's free? Now, the only problem is, well, actually there are a a lot of problems. The first is that I'm not a tech person. I have no IT background or programming background. I have a STEM background in science. So the second is how does one just start using Linux? After all, one does not simply walk into Mordor. Everyone acts like Linux is this singular thing like Windows or Mac, but it's not. Linux is a collection of hundreds of different peanut butter brands, AKA distros, where Windows is a specific type of almond butter and Mac is another very specific type of macadamia nut butter. Mm, I'm getting hungry. So I'm here looking at all the different distros wondering which one do I pick? Clearly whoever said put it on an unused PC didn't specify what it even was. Do I install Ubuntu, Mint, Arch, Fedora? Someone just tell me what to pick. And after reading a bunch of Google search results and Reddit posts, I'm left more confused than ever. The most common answers were just pick the one that's good for your needs. Wow, thanks. If I knew which one was good for me, I would would have installed it already. But when confused, just follow the herd, right? And after constant research and deliberation and following the AI overview, I picked Mint because everyone likes it and I sure hope I made the right decision. It's supposed to be like Windows, very user-friendly and work right out of the box. Easy enough. Boy, was I wrong. When you open up the Mint website, you're hit with another difficult choice. There's three versions, a sleek, modern and innovative cinnamon edition, a light, simple and efficient x fist x fist edition, a classic and traditional mate edition. It's like online dating. Hmm, which one has the best description that best matches what I want? You probably can't go wrong with sleek and innovative. It's slick, it's beautiful, it's full of new features. Put that on your dating profile, I dare you. you might get a hit. So cinnamon it is. I downloaded the ISO file from one of their many download hosts. They have a lot. And after some copy and pasting, I mean elite terminal hacking skills, I verified that I had a legitimate copy of this distro. So why do you need that, you ask? Because it's the internet. And there's a possibility that a bad actor somewhere on the internet modified this image so it's broken or even dangerous. They could be hacking me or tracking my keystrokes. Now that I know it's legit, it's time to write it to a USB drive I found laying around. You just download a program called Balena Etcher, click a couple buttons and boom, my ISO image was on my USB drive. So I got my old laptop, I plugged in the drive using a hub and then it just worked. <laughs> just kidding, you didn't actually expect it to work right away, did you? But I wasn't willing to give up yet. I was determined not to let Linux beat me, especially not so early in the process. This is mint cinnamon, not the infamously hard to install Arch Linux, maybe. 
which I'll use maybe later. So I went through various troubleshooting to get my laptop to boot from USB. But after constant keyboard bashing on delete, escape, and F12, I finally got it to work by hacking through the matrix. Now at this point, I sure hope there wouldn't be more problems ahead for me. After all, this distro just works out of the box. And with various waits and clicks later, I got through the installation process without a hitch. It was surprisingly well put together and looked very polished. I was shocked. It even gave me a slideshow on all the different softwares I could use, like Steam and Discord. But there was one big surprise in that there were zero ads, no upsells, no promotions, nothing. It felt like freedom. I restarted and boom, there it was. I was using Linux. So first things first, I need to download OBS so I can record and show you what I'm doing. So with Windows and Mac, you install software by downloading these packages in .exe or .dmg files. But with Linux, there's this clean and easy way to install software that doesn't involve any of that. Instead, you open up the terminal, Elite Hacker by the way, Epic Hacker, and you type in sudo, which I've learned is like an admin user, I think it stands for super user. You type in apt, which is not apartment, but a program that handles software packages, and the rest, well, you understand the rest, so you type sudo apt install obs-studio. It's installed, it's ready to go, and I honestly think I'm getting the hang of this. So now that it's installed, there are certain things I need to do to make my Linux useful. Sure, it does work great out of the box, but it's like getting a new phone. You have to change all the settings, install, uninstall programs, and truly customize and optimize it to fit your needs. So I want mine to be similar to my main computer, which means resembling and working like how Mac does. When you're using a new PC, you want to make sure the drivers are updated or else things might not run properly. And to do that, there was this thing called an update manager that did it all for me with a click of a button. Just update and boom, it installed. So convenient. When I set up a device, I always schedule a nighttime mode. On Windows, I use a program called Flux to make the screen more yellow at night so I could go to sleep better. It was a lot easier than I thought though. Mint Cinnamon has something called the night light. I set the schedule and temperature you want your screen to be. I didn't have to do any hacking. So slowly, I started changing all the settings so it would resemble my keyboard shortcuts and workflow with Mac. The first was to install a spotlight-like program called Ulauncher. The second was to switch switch control and alt around, and the third is to move the top bar to the left side instead of the right. That's pretty close to Mac, but I'll get into all the customization I can do on Linux soon. But many of you who are switching away from Windows are probably wondering one thing. Can you game on Linux? Well like all answers, it depends. I was able to download Steam and Steam games, but I'll test them out later because my laptop just ran out of batteries and I left the charger at home. I honestly needed a break from Linux anyways. At that point, it seemed like a promising OS, but there was one question looming over me. Did I really waste hundreds of dollars by switching to Mac instead of just jumping into the unknown of Linux? This break was a great opportunity to eat at our new favorite health food shop because we're training for our first triathlon. And when you're swimming, running, and biking two times a week, good food is your best friend. I guess using Linux is a lot like working out. It's frustrating, it's exhausting, but it's also oddly satisfying when you're problem solving and troubleshooting your way through it. Like successfully playing a game on hard mode. Pat yourself on the back. But anyways, I got the charger and went back to the office to plug it in. Linux gaming used to not be a real thing, but Steam Play now lets you run Windows only games on Linux by using a compatibility layer called Proton. Don't ask me for details, I just know it works. Not every game is compatible, but most of them are. So after I made sure my laptop was ready to handle work tasks like Discord and Notion, honestly, it would be crazy if I could just replace my entire work setup with Linux. I mean, would I miss my MacBook? Or would Linux just be so much more superior in every way. And hours later, my Linux environment was ready for me to switch to it. But there was one big problem. Wait, is this like deja vu? Because there's a lot of problems. My laptop setup is designed to work with my Mac not a Linux laptop. The adapter I used to go from a USB port to two HDMI monitors doesn't have software for Linux. And the CalDigit TS3 doesn't work either, despite showing the blue on light. Why doesn't it work? So was this the end? All of that hard work and nothing to show for it? Surely someone before me has tried to plug in multiple monitors to their Linux laptop. And they had. In September of 2015, this exact article or forum post, someone had the same problem. It links to the drivers, 
that actually were updated in 2025, which means it's new and it has to work. It would be game changing to use my Linux laptop with my current dual monitor setup. That would be awesome. Now, after messing with the terminal and the Eufy menu again, I finally got everything to install. The dual monitors worked, but the dock still didn't. And my laptop only has three ports. It's not enough to access all my desk accessories. Not to mention, I'm currently connected to internet with Wi-Fi and not a hardwired connection. For my needs, AKA uploading huge video files, Wi-Fi just isn't good enough. So it's back to Google once again. Everyone is saying Linux is about freedom. Freedom feels suspiciously like reading endless Reddit threads and Google posts. But luckily I found someone who was in my exact situation. A Reddit user from five years ago with the exact same laptop as me wanted to connect his Thunderbolt dock as well. And he helpfully outlined, conveniently outlined his step-by-step -step process. Back to my elite hacking on the terminal again, and I did it. It's not perfect, but I now have two external displays and a ton of accessories and a working dock. So the switch from Mac to Linux was actually faster than Windows to Mac, surprisingly. There are so many resources and other people with similar problems as me out there. The internet is such a great place. So I didn't have to give up on Linux after all. But the real question remains, can my Linux laptop become the ultimate work and gaming machine? So despite everything working for now, I'm hesitant to pack away my MacBook permanently. Mac still feels safer to use and I 100% know it won't have problems. I'm not sure I can say the same for Linux. I've proved Linux has the ability to do pretty much every work task, but what about gaming. Now to disclaimer, I'm not an avid gamer, but I do play from time to time, mostly on my Steam Deck. But Jake sometimes plays at home and he's super into city skylines right now. It's a city builder game. So I'm going to download that for him. But the moment of truth, will it game? And it does. I mean, it opens the program. It's a little slow considering it's still a laptop. I guess I have to like turn all the graphics really low and then maybe I'll just play a graphically low intensity game like Old School RuneScape. But Linux can't play every game out there. Games with anti-cheat systems like Valorant just won't work properly. But at least I know it plays more games than Mac. So I'll put that as a small win. So was I wrong in switching to Mac instead of going open source with Linux? Will Linux become my daily driver? And more importantly, should you switch switch to Linux. Now, before I can answer all those questions, I want to show you my finished mint cinnamon right here. But for some reason, the boot up, I think is really slow. So I'm going to need to learn some ultra hacker things to make it boot up a lot faster. But look at it. It's so pretty. I think one of the things that I didn't expect Linux to be was pretty. At the bottom here, you've got the time and everything. You've got the battery mode here. The battery has actually improved on Linux compared to Windows. Like it lasts way longer. It's it tells me exactly how much time I have remaining, what percentage is left. I can down the brightness right here. And I don't even have to go into settings and do crazy stuff. And I can turn down the backlight and there's different modes. So this is a mint cinnamon thing. Mint Mate did not have these power saver balance performance modes. This is the update manager. This is how you install updates. It's really easy. You just press this button, install updates and boom, it'll do it for you. So this is the, the start menu. I've got Firefox software manager, which apparently you're not supposed to install software with the software manager. You're supposed to do the sudo apt install blank blank blank. That way the thing will update itself where with the software manager, you have to uninstall the old one, install the new one and keep doing that. So you don't want to do that. And then if I press alt and space, boom, my U launcher pops up. And with it, I can open Firefox amongst various other softwares. I could do whatever with it. It's really cool. I've been using it every night. It's my dedicated home laptop. And then my MacBook, I just keep it in the office. I love that it's brought life back to my laptop. So honestly, in theory, I could have saved hundreds, if not thousands of dollars by choosing Linux instead of Mac. Could have being the answer. But I paid for assurance. Knowing that I didn't have to troubleshoot random software when working, it's worth the money. I don't regret it, but I am super happy to have made the jump to Linux and being brave enough to try it. From my past month with Linux, especially Mint so far, it's surprisingly easy to use if you're willing to Google and just troubleshoot some things yourself. Maybe a decade ago, Linux was reserved for programmers and hackers of the world, but now it's much more accessible. For the longest time, I was afraid of switching to Linux. It felt like jumping off the diving 
board for the first time, which I did last week. You think you're gonna die, like actually just go under and die. But in reality, there's just a bit of discomfort. You're under the water a bit, and then you float back to the top and then you're okay. Linux lets you feel like an absolute hacker for opening up the terminal and putting in random commands that maybe the person next to you has no idea what you're doing. And it gives you the freedom and control that you want. And it is as good as other people say it is. The options are endless, but it's not without its problems either. Mac and Windows have so much more compatibility with most programs like Notion and Adobe. So before you switch to Linux, make sure that it can do what you need it to. So if you've been looking to get into Linux, be brave. It's not as hard as you think.